2023 was the second hardest year I've had in business to date. I've lost relationships with business professionals, tens of thousands of pounds worth of investment, and also had CCJs filed against my business. But it was also one of the most important years that I've had in my business career. And I'm going to show you how. Starting in Jan 2023, we had obviously word of interest rates being on the rise, as well as cost of living crisis. Made January to April very, very hard to really make any amount of profit. So combined with this, I've managed to lose three three Airbnb properties in total, two of which I lost in January, two properties in Coventry, and one which was my best property that I'd had in Leeds city centre, which is a lovely three bedroom penthouse apartment. I lost this deal due to one of the partners that I had dying uh, very suddenly at the age of 40, which was very sad. And also I was facing some quite tough issues with management, paying an awful lot of money out to people. I'd grown very, very fast in the year before and I was starting to face quite a lot of challenges that I knew if I didn't start making some key pivotal changes to this year, I may not see December. Something that is very important that people do when facing these kinds of realities is that you don't make emotional decisions. It's very important that you think about things rationally. So I looked at my business as a whole and I says, right, we are facing times that I am uncertain of. And something that I do know is that the previous two years, which I'd built my business off of, is not going to be the same for the next 24 months. So I have to make changes in order to adapt with the times. I noticed that I had some seasonal properties, which were okay during the summer months, but were very tough during the winter months. And I was already facing a very tough time from January to April. So some things that I did was I needed to get rid of those seasonal properties. I needed to make sure that I didn't have those properties on my books and that I recover as much as my investment is humanly possible so that I could prepare for those winter months. Another thing was I need to start looking at the costs that I have within my business. Times were fine before and that business model that I'd created for those time periods was fine, but times are changing now. I have to make sure that I have a little bit more control over my business, so that is exactly what I did. Something you also have to think of is to not go into retreat mode. Some people, when they're faced with these situations, is they start thinking, I can't take on any more, I can't reinvest into my business, I need to keep this cash, I need to preserve, and they start retreating. Something you also have to look at is the opportunities that be, could be presented to you within this marketplace. I have an opportunity now in 2023 to take on properties now that perform now because times are hard and they will only get better from this point. Things don't constantly stay down. So if you can find properties that work now, then they only are going to work better in the future. So something that I did was made a review of the properties that I had taken on and look at the ones that are really performing very well, despite the current circumstances that we are facing, and take on properties that are exactly like those ones. That's gonna completely restructure my business and make it much more stable over the next 24 months and the times to come. As a result of this, in the first quarter of 2023, I took on a lovely three bedroom flat in York City Centre. That fit in very, very well with my business model. York was a very good area. Another one I'd also taken on was a lovely two bedrooms in Nottingham City Centre. So those were two very good additions that I added that did well despite the circumstances that we're facing. The first item I had on my agenda was sorting out my seasonal properties and getting them so that they were sold at a price that I was happy with. So something that I did was totaled up all of my cost. I had some joint venture partners that were involved in this deal. So I added up how much that I owe them. I added up all of my personal investment. I also added up total of the losses and or profit that has been occurred during the time period that I had them. And I came up with my figure in which I think I would like to sell this property for, as well as contingencies of worst likely what I would take and the highest likely chance that I would take. Something that a lot of people might have done is why looking at selling this property now would it not be better to sell it in September? Me personally I didn't agree with this purely because it was on my agenda to get this property sold. I chose to sell this property in April purely because I knew what my costs are and I wanted to get the maximum for it so that I could move on with the other item on my agenda, which was bringing my overall costs down. So we managed to sell this on, we sold it for a very, very good price. I can't stipulate exactly what it was. Now this enabled me to pay back the joint venture partner, recover a lot of costs that I'd put into the deal, starting in the summer period, having a much bigger, better cash balance, and I just offloaded a lot of overhead. The overhead in this property was in excess of 8,000 pounds a month, so I'd recovered a lot of overhead. So my business was looking a lot better. Now the next thing I did was 
come up with a strategy on how I can keep my costs down but still enable to expand. It ultimately led to me starting a whole new business venture called Stayful. Stayful is an Airbnb management company. I was currently having my properties managed, so my current costs were sort of in excess of three, four, five thousand pounds a month for this property to be managed. Due to me moving over to becoming self-managed, I managed to bring those costs down by around three to four thousand pounds. This enabled me now as coming into the summer to really sort of maximize my profits, but also this was the product of a merger business. So we merged companies with a friend of mine who I'd known in the industry for quite a few years now. This is what created us to have strength in numbers, which was the key part. So we were starting our management company straight away with an excess of 30 to 40 properties most of which were ours. We had a fantastic proposal that we had to our customers and something that we created straight off the bat was a management structure of around three to four people inside of the team. So straight away, even though our company Stayful was very new, it had the appearance of being a much larger and stronger business because we had been doing it for so many years and it would also help us to manage our cash flow a lot better. I appreciate that I may be explaining all of this in a way where it sounds very easy. It really was not. These two things that I implemented within my business this year were extremely challenging things to do. It was very, very hard to sell those properties. It created an awful lot of stress. It was very difficult to get these sold, as well as the management company. There was a lot of legal and accounts, things to sort out, and the merger was not cut and dry and not straightforward, but we did get there in the end. This then led us coming in towards the, the back end of the year. This was the time where I knew that the fruits of the labor that I'd implemented over the last eight months were going to really come into fruition because I was going to be able to see whether I could still remain profitable during a slower season and it was very tough. I was around making the same that I would have been making in the winter of last year but with all the extra effort going on but ultimately it led to it being a success. So we ended the year ultimately with making a saving of around £3,000 a month within our business internally. Also a total of around £11,000 a month combined with the overhead that I had gotten rid of by getting rid of those seasonal properties. We now have a portfolio of properties that are not seasonal at all in areas that are high demanding. On top of this, I now understand the best places that are going to work based on the circumstances uh, that we're facing right now. We've also pivoted the business quite um, to adapt to the times that we are facing in this current circumstance so that following on the next year, because I think the circumstances that we are facing right now are going to last for at least a sort of two to three years and are going to be the norm for that while. Key message that I want people to take away is that running a business isn't always straightforward have to learn to adapt to the times as your industry evolves and changes. Something you can always try and do is look to the future to see what is going to happen. This is what experience will teach you, but not everyone is able to do that. I'm certainly not at a point where I'm able to do that. I haven't seen enough peaks and troughs within my industry, but it's something that is very, very crucial as you gain knowledge and expertise in running a business that you start to be able to understand this sort of... This is what I want people to do is that know that running a business isn't always plain sailing, but if you're committed to the cause, you, you can't fail. You have to be able to act on information quickly. If I'd have taken sort of six months, eight months to react to something, I may not be here today. This is exactly the sort of information that we teach inside of the academy and I wanted to create a community around the academy with so people can build businesses that are going to last. So click the link below if you're interested in joining the academy. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next.